All right, here we go. It's late, it's like three in the morning, but I refuse to fall behind schedule. So I'm gonna keep my videos up, even though technically it's the next day. We dealt with socialism. This week we're dealing with fascism because everyone's talking about fascism. And um, you're gonna see why it's interesting how they define these terms and not so much, but when these things happen, you'll see what I mean. Origins and development. Whereas liberalism, conservatism, and socialism are 19th century ideologies, fascism is a child of the 20th century. Some would say specifically of the period between the two world wars. Indeed, fascism emerged very much as a revolt against modernity against the ideas and values of the Enlightenment and the political creeds that it spawned. The Nazis in Germany, for instance, proclaimed that 1789 is abolished. In fascist Italy, slogans such as believe, obey, fight, and order, authority, justice replaced the more familiar principles of the French Revolution, liberty, equality, and fraternity. Fascism came not only as a bolt from the blue, as O'Sullivan put it, but also attempted to make the political world anew, quite literally to root out and destroy the inheritance of conventional political thought. First of all, I don't know why Europeans do this, but they act as if nothing was happening anywhere else in the world because we didn't give these things a name and they do it even to this day. That's one. Two, black people in the 1700s weren't living under fascism. We weren't living under fascism during Jim Crow. 1700s, 1800s, before the Civil War because they were fascists trying to keep us enslaved. It's weird. Or do they just think when things happen to us, it doesn't matter because we're not human. Although the major ideas and doctrines of fascism can be traced back to the 19th century, they were fused together and shaped by the war, by World War I and its aftermath, in particular by a potent mixture of war and revolution. Fascism emerged most dramatically in Italy and Germany. In Italy, a fascist party was formed in 1919. Its leader, Benito Mussolini, was appointed prime minister in 1922 against the backdrop of the monarch on Rome. And by 1926, one party fascist state had been established. The National Socialist German Workers Party, known as the Nazis, was also formed in 1919. And under the leadership of Adolf Hitler, it consciously adopted the style of Mussolini's fascists. Hitler was appointed German Chancellor in 1933 and in a little over a year had turned Germany into Nazi dictatorships. During the same period, democracy collapsed or was overthrown in much of Europe, often being supplanted by right-wing authoritarian or openly fascist regimes. Uh, especially in Eastern Europe. Regimes that bear some relationship to fascism have only developed outside Europe, notably in the 1930s in the imperial in imperial Japan and in Argentina under Perón, 1945 to 55. The origins and meanings of fascism have provoked considerable historical interest and only fierce disagreements. No single factor can on its own account for the rise of fascism. Rather, fascism emerged out of a complex range of historical forces that were present during the inner war period. In the first place, democratic government had only recently been established in many parts of Europe, and democratic political values had not replaced old autocratic ones. Moreover, democratic government, representing a coalition of interests or parties, often appeared weak and unstable when confronted by economic or political crisis. In this context, the, the prospect of strong leadership 
brought about by personal rule cast a powerful appeal. Second, European society had been disrupted by the experience of industrialization, which had particularly threatened a lower middle class of shopkeepers, small businesses, farmers, and craftsmen who were squeezed between the growing might of big business on the one hand and the rising power of organized labor on the other. Fascist movements drew their membership and support largely from such lower middle class elements. In a sense, fascism was an extremism, extremism of the center, uh, a revolt of the lower middle class, a fact that helps to explain the hostility of fascism to both capitalism and communism. Um, the one thing that you notice it's never brought about by the fascists. So you say, well, how does fascism get to the point where it gets to? You know, it's not the Trumps of the world. They're always there. The Wallaces, the David Dukes. It's when the other side starts compromising. Well, we have to do this together. We can't have a filibuster. We have to work together. We have to work across the aisle. And you can't work across the aisle with fascists. But that's what happens. That's what's happening today. That's what Biden believes in. And that's why you. it doesn't matter who you vote for next year. If one of the two, those two win, if a third party member doesn't come up and win, we're finished. Third, the period after World War I was deeply affected by the Russian Revolution. And the fear among the property classes the social revolution was about to spread throughout Europe. Fascist group undo groups undoubtedly drew both financial and political support for business interests. <laughs> Excuse me, for business interests. As a result, Marxist historians have interpreted fascism as a form of counter-revolution, an attempt by the bourgeoisie to cling on to power by lending support to fascist dictators. <clears throat> Fourth, the world economic crisis of the 1930s often provided a final blow to already fragile democracies. Rising unemployment and economic failure produced an atmosphere of crisis and pessimism that could be exploited by political extremism and demagogues. Finally, World War I has failed to resolve international conflict and rivalries leaving a bitter inheritance of frustrated nationalism and the desire for revenge. Nationalist tensions were, were strong in those have-not nations that had either, like Germany, been defeated in the war or have been deeply disappointed by the terms of the Versailles peace settlement. For example, Italy and Japan, in addition to experience of war itself, had generated a particularly militant form of nationalism and imbued it with militaristic values. Um, again, what democracies? You have whole people who were left out of the system. What democracies? Fascist regimes were not overthrown by popular revolt or protest, but by defeat in World War II. Since 1945, fascist movements have achieved only marginal success, encouraging some to believe that fascism was a specifically interwar phenomenon linked to the unique combination of historical circumstances that characterized that period. Others, however, regard fascism as an overpresent present danger, an ever-present danger, I'm sorry, seeing its roots in human psychology or as Eric Fromm called it the fear of freedom. Modern civilization has produced greater individual freedom, but it, with it, the danger of isolation and insecurity. I don't know that that's true. I, I didn't feel free until 2020. And after 2020, so many people bucked the, new, the Great Reset that I'm not free now. Um, we're in some, I'm in some kind of weird stasis. I still don't have any power completely. 
but the state hasn't let me drop through the floor. Um, political instability or an economic crisis could therefore produce conditions in which fascism could revive. Fears, for example, have been expressed about the growth of neo-fascism in parts of Eastern Europe following the collapse of communist, of communist rule, 1989 to 1991. The prospects for fascism in the light of the advance of globalization are discussed in the final section of the chapter. I like the way they say it in Europe, like it's not here. Um, we're finished with that section. We're going to go core themes, strength through unity in the next reading. Really great reference book. Um, you can use it. You start to see the holes in it, though. It's very limited in who it looks at. And you have to be or must be um, realistic about who all exists. Um, look at all the human civilizations and look at the concepts of what you're saying and see if other people were carrying out those concepts even if they weren't calling it that. Um, you know what to do. Support by hitting on links. You can give a donation, whatever the case may be, and become a sponsor if you want. And I say be safe and take care of yourself.